Hi everyone, welcome to my talk. My name is Xiang Hongmi. Uh, it's my great pleasure to present our work on mobile proxy network. This is a joint work um, with my collaborators from Indiana University and also University of Minnesota. So web proxies are commonly used in our daily life for different purposes, uh, such as to evade censorship and to um, measure the effectiveness of uh, mobile advertisements. Uh, there are a lot of different kinds of web proxies, uh, such as the Tor network, commercial VPN networks, and also simple HTTP and uh, SOX proxies. However, all those kinds of proxies have a set of limitations, uh, especially they have a limited number of access nodes. Even for the Tor network, it has only tens of thousands um, access uh, relays. Also, um, those access nodes are usually deployed in uh, data center networks, which are distinguishable from common users uh, residential networks. Um, besides, those access nodes are usually commonly shared by a lot of users. Some can be heavily abused. All those kind of limitations um, will make traffic uh, related through those access nodes suffer from uh, service blocking or degradation. In recent years, we have identified a new kind of uh, web proxies and we call it a residential RB proxy as a service. So well adopted providers include Luminati, GeoSurf, and the proxy rack. So as a proxy customer, you will purchase from the proxy provider and to relay your traffic, you will contact to the proxy gateways and the gateways will decide the exact proxy node to access your traffic. And in our previous work, we have carried out a large scale measurement to understand this ecosystem. And our measurement has revealed a set of interesting findings. Especially, we have indeed observed millions of residential proxy nodes that are globally distributed. And also, the recruitment process is found to be suspicious. Uh, and we have identified a set of potentially wanted program or Windows platform that have served as proxy nodes. Also, this ecosystem was found to be abused by proxy customers to relay suspicious traffic, such as um, advertisement fraud. And we have identified some risks to the local network environment incurred by this ecosystem. For more details, you can refer to our paper uh, published in Auckland 19. Is our understanding regarding this ecosystem complete enough? Uh, are there any missing components? Uh, the answer is yes. That's why I'm here to present you our follow-up work. Considering the pervasiveness of mobile computing, it's intuitive to wonder whether mobile devices have been recruited into this ecosystem to serve as proxy nodes, and whether that will incur new security concerns. To answer those questions and to further detect the proxy program and to profile proxy traffic. We have carried out this follow-up and our follow-up have identified a previous unknown but important player in this ecosystem, which is the app developers. Those app developers are independent from proxy providers. They develop and distribute their mobile apps to mobile users. To monetize their mobile app, they may adopt proxy SDKs from proxy providers. And once apps integrated with proxy SDKs uh, got distributed to mobile devices, those mobile devices will be uh, converted into proxy nodes to serve relay traffic. So following this new discovery, we move to reach about its potential security problem. Here we assume the proxy SDK is a attractive and profitable monetization channel for mobile app developers. Based on this assumption, we have identified two potential security problems. One is regarding the third-party apps, and we call it proxy app 
because um, it has an integrity uh, the process decay. So we wonder whether uh, malicious uh, mobile apps have uh, utilized this ecosystem to monetize their um, themselves. We also want to learn whether integrating a process decay will damage the reputation of a benign app. Another security problem residing in device users. We want to learn whether users are well notified regarding uh, proxy behaviors and the proxy SDKs, and whether they are willing to relay traffic through their devices. Also, whether those proxy SDKs will abuse the on-device resources, such as cellular data. To verify those assumptions and to further profile those potential security problems, we have uh, designed and implemented a methodology to identify proxy providers to detect a proxy apps to uh, profile and capture proxy traffic and the proxy behavior. For time limit, I will not go into the details for which you can re, uh, refer to our paper. Instead, I will uh, present you the detailed findings from this methodology. We'll start by verifying the assumption. We have identified four proxy providers which have provided proxy SDKs on several platforms especially the Android. And their offers are found to be attractive and profitable for mobile app developers. Um, usually, uh, for every 1 million monthly active users for a given app, the app developer can, can get a month, monthly payment of um, 50K dollars. And we also compared the proxy SDK with other uh, app monetization channel. As shown in this table, um, Pox SDK is actually very um, attractive even compared to others. When compared with ads, um, Pox SDK will incur negligible user experience overhead, and it doesn't require the user's attention. When compared to the data monetization SDK, Pox SDK can provide better uh, monetization. I mean, better revenue. As we can see, Pox SDK is actually a very attractive and profitable app monetization option for app developers. We then move forward to profile the security risks um, related to Pox app. To start, we need to identify the real world Pox app. Um, in our study, we have extracted a set of robust as a signature for Pox SDK. And we then leverage those signatures to scan more than 2 million Android APKs, among which we have identified 1,700 Android uh, APKs um, that have integrated at least one Pox SDK. Those APKs belong to almost 1,000 apps, Android apps. All those Android apps have ever uh, show up uh, in Google Play. But by August 19, only 171 was still available in Google Play. But even for those um, still available in Google Play, their installations in some can, can be more than 300 million. So we then move to profile the security risks related to those identified Pox app. Um, as the as aforementioned, most of were removed from Google Play, but we wonder whether they were removed because of integrating Pox SDK or because of other reasons. So we collected all the historic, historical warrants of those um, apps and retrieved their vast total analysis report. Results show that before integrating Pox SDK, um, almost 40% have already got flagged as malicious, and many of them are actually phishing or spam apps. And um, after integrating Pox SDK, 80% um, of the APK warrant got flagged as malicious. So overall, we can conclude that the security risks are bi-directional. Um, on one side, 
uh, malware operators have utilized this channel to monetize their mobile malware. On the other side, a benign app may dam damage its reputation when integrating a POX SDK, which will be further demonstrated by our communication with Google Play, which will be di discussed later. With that more to profile um, the security risks for device users, uh, starting by uh, profile, profiling whether users are well notified regarding the proxy SDKs and the uh, proxy behaviors. As shown on this slide, all the proxy SDKs will show users a dialogue when users first open the apps. Um, however, the text on the dialogue seems very confusing. We wonder whether users can interpret those uh, dialogues correctly. So we carried out a uh, user study to understand the user's awareness and also to un understand whether users are willing to relay traffic through their devices for some reward. Um, results show that um, almost 80% of the participants cannot interpret the cons consent correctly. And uh, not and 34% are not at all willing to relay traffic through their devices. And only 8% will allow relaying using cellular data. So apparently those dialogues are a little bit ambiguous for users. And uh, many users are not willing to relay traffic through their devices. So based on the um, results of the user study, we moved forward to profile their relaying behavior. Um, um, so through our large scale uh, profiling of the detector uh, proxy apps, uh, we found that uh, those proxy SDKs will adapt to their relaying behavior depending on the system conditions and activities. For example, when the internet con uh, network connection is switched from Wi-Fi to cellular, the relaying uh, frequency will be, de will be lowered. And also when users are doing some uh, resource consuming activities, such as uh, making a phone call, the relaying behaviors will, uh, the, relaying, the relaying activities will also be lowered. However, on average, a proxy SDK can consume gigabytes of Wi-Fi data and tens of megabytes cellular data every day. And uh, also, um, one thing to note is that this process is totally out of control for the users. They don't have uh, the visibility to for those behaviors, not to mention to configure them. Um, what is even more cons concerning is that when profile the proxy apps of Luminati and Market Sox, we have identified another co-located Pox SDK. By now, we still don't know the provider of this proxy SDK. What we know is that this proxy SDK um, doesn't show user consent, but uh, aggressively relay traffic in the background. By now, we can conclude that uh, there are either no user consent in the case of the secret proxy SDK. Also, user consent dialogues are very ambiguous. Also, the resource usage is totally out of the control of um, two users. We have also communicated our findings uh, with the relevant parties, um, starting by uh, communicating with Google Play team. Our findings are well acknowledged, and we also learned from Google Play that they are also working to understand and detect such kind of proxy SDK. And they have also adapted their developer's policy since June 19, and will consider such kind of um, proxy SDK integration as a device and a network abuse. We have also contacted proxy service providers. Um, however, MonkeySox and Ninja didn't respond to our disclosure, even if we have tried several times. OSY Labs have responded, 
and claimed that they have stopped providing Parks SDK to third-party app developers concerning the security and privacy risks. Luminati has also responded and said they have, uh, they have redesigned the user consent dialogue to make it uh, more clear. Um, the right figure shows the uh, dialogue, the new dialogue from Luminati. In summary, we can see this ecosystem has become a promising and stealthy monetization channel for mobile malware. And it has indeed incurred non uh, negligible security and privacy risks to mobile device owners. Thank you for attending my talk, and I'm ready to take any questions. You can also reach out to me through my email.